Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries. This Christmas, I built my dad a custom picture frame for a large print that he had and that he wanted to hang in his office. If you've ever checked out prices for custom picture frames, you might be a little overwhelmed at how crazy expensive they are, but they're really easy to make. I made mine using dowels and I even added a little decorative edge like you see right here in the corner. I've got the full plans and all the details in the blog post in the description below, but I'll give you a video tutorial right here. So if you're ready to get started, let's go. I happen to have one board in storage of Kentucky coffee wood, which is my dad's favorite kind of wood. So I planed it down to be nice and smooth. And then I figured out the size that the frame needed to be based on the size of his print. All the details on finding how big your frame needs to be can be found um, in the blog post in the description below. So I cut my board down to one piece that would be the height that I needed and one piece that would be the length that I needed. In the next step, I rip these each into two thinner strips so I actually have the four pieces that will make the whole frame. So once my board was cut down to these lengths that I needed, I moved over to the table saw and squared off the rough edges of the board to get a nice clean edge that'll make nice corners. And then I ripped my boards in half to make four pieces two and three quarter inch wide. Two pieces will be the vertical pieces of the frame and two will be the horizontal pieces of the frame to make, you know, the whole four-sided frame. Then I moved back over to the miter saw, adjusted my miter to 45 degrees and cut down my boards to the exact size that I needed for the frame with 45 degree mitered corners. It's um, a helpful tip to double check with a good reliable square that your 45 degree miter is actually 45 degrees. Then I sanded just a little bit off the edges to make sure it wasn't rough and I used a dowel jig to drill dowel holes in each end of each of the four pieces for the frame. Make sure that your holes correspond to each other and aren't off because if they're off then your 45s will not line up properly. And don't worry, I noticed the burn marks. Now I'm sanding off the burn marks because my table saw blade is a little old and it burnt my wood when I ripped it. Whoops. <laughs> okay, so now that everything is sanded, I glued it all up. And actually, it's a funny story because once I got everything glued up with the dowels, I re-measured just to double check that I had the frame the right size and I had miscalculated and I made my board three inches wide, or my frame three inches wider than it was supposed to be. And I ended up having to take the whole thing apart and re glue it up after I trimmed the boards down three inches. So be sure to double check your measurements before glue up because glue ups are a little stressful and you don't want to have to do them twice. So, with everything glued up, clamp it all together and make sure your miters are nice and tight and let the glue dry. Once the glue is dry, I sanded off any squeeze out or excess glue on the corners and made sure that I had gotten all the burn marks off the frame. Then I attached a Roman OG bit into my router and ran along the outside edges, which is also another funny story. If you want to read the whole story about how I cracked the whole frame with my Roman OG bit, you can read it in the blog post in the description below. But once the decorative edge was put on, I flipped the frame over and used the rabbiting router bit to cut a small groove into the inside of the frame for the glass in the picture and the backer to fit down into. With a rabbiting bit, you're going to have rounded corners, so you'll have to chisel out to get a nice 90 degree corner, just like shown. Be very careful that you don't break your frame or um, crack it while you're trying to chisel out your 90 degree corner. And now it's time for the mat. I couldn't find a pre-made mat for the print because the print was so huge. I had to make my own mat. So I picked up a piece of mat board from Hobby Lobby. I'm sure you can probably get it at any craft store. And I traced out the opening I needed to cut for the print to fit in. I left a three inch edge along all sides of the mat. And this should fit exactly into my routed groove on my picture frame. So I cut it out using an X-Acto knife and then I actually duct taped the print onto the back side of it. I 
purchased a piece of glass from my local glass place to fit in the frame, added the mat, and a piece of quarter inch plywood backer board. It's just cheap quarter inch plywood cut to the right size to fit into the groove. And then I use these, I don't even know what you call them, but they're like little twisty picture frame holders. You've probably seen them in any store bought frame that you've bought. They twist so that you can take the glass and the backer board out to change the picture, and then they twist back in place to hold the backer board in place so that your picture doesn't fall out. I really like using these because it makes it really easy to switch out your pictures if you change your mind or want something different. I just screw these in place along all the edges of the frame and that's it. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention that before I put the glass and the print and everything together, I actually clear coated the wood just to bring out the natural grain and to seal it. So really, that's it. I don't think I forgot anything else. <laughs> and that's how to make your own DIY custom picture frame without spending a crazy fortune. So if you want to make your own, be sure to check out the blog post below for the full details and plans and be sure to subscribe to my channel for plenty more do-it-yourself videos and projects.